Hello, my most amazing artist. I hope everybody is having an amazing day. I'm really excited because we're going on a dino dig today and we're working with salt dough clay. You guys know I love salt dough clay. So here's what's in store. You will need to get a piece of cardboard, maybe from a box, like a cereal box, but I'm actually using a thicker piece of cardboard. It needs to be something sturdy enough to support the weight of your dinosaur. Then to make your salt dough clay, you just need a quarter cup of salt, a quarter cup of water, and a half a cup of flour. Any kind of flour will work, including gluten-free. If you don't have those supplies to make your own salt dough, but you do have clay, Play-Doh would work, Model Magic is great, and so is modeling clay. And use what you've got. The other thing you might wanna grab are some crayons. I'll be walking you through the recipe and how to make your very own dinosaur. But before we get started, let's do our art class catchphrase. I make messes. I make mistakes. Oops, I sure do. Did you see what I did there? But deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Awesome! Big shout out and air high five to our two sponsors, Dixon Ticonderoga, the makers of the best pencils on the planet, as well as a lot of the great construction paper that I use, and Art to Remember. Art to Remember is our new sponsor this week. They are the ones where you can create your own online art gallery by just taking your phone, taking a picture of your artwork and uploading it onto their site. Once you've created your own art gallery there, then you can have your artwork printed on a whole slew of amazing products. So make sure that you check them out. Thank you, Dixon Ticonderoga and Art to Remember for sponsoring us today. Get those pinkies out, people. <clears throat> I pinky promise to do my best to finish what I start, to keep a positive attitude. Mwah! All right, roll up those sleeves. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's go ahead and go on a dino dig. The first thing we're going to do is get a piece of cardboard, a cereal box works great, anything that's a little bit thick because it's going to need to support or hold up the weight of your dinosaur bones. So I've got my piece of cardboard here and, and you could leave it just like this. It's a great color of brown, but I wanna antique it or make it look a little bit old. So I'm going to use some crayons and I'm just going to do some rubbing. When I do a crayon rubbing, I like to use crayons that don't have any paper on them. I also like to use shorter crayons. Now I know you might not like breaking crayons and you definitely might get in trouble for doing so, but they do make for great things for doing a rubbing. So I've got my crayons and to do a rubbing, I'm going to hold the crayon on its side, like it's shh, it's sleeping. And now I'm just going to rub up and down or across my board. So I'm gonna hold it still with one hand, do a little bit of rubbing. And the cool thing is I can start to see the texture of my cardboard. It's a little hard to see. So if you want it to be darker, add more pressure, put some muscle into it so that you can see it. Also something that you can do is just take your crayon and color. So you could also just color your board in, maybe using kind of a back and forth line, I'm trying to think about how I can make my cardboard look a little bit old. So that way when people see it, they don't automatically think cardboard, but they focus on the bones and they consider the background to be a part of my masterpiece. All right, once you've got this finished up, then we're ready to mix up our salt dough clay. You might even want to include a couple of different kinds of colors, different kinds of brown, turn your board around, do something called cross hatching. That means I'm crossing one color over another. All right, I think I'm ready to go ahead and create my salt dough clay. To create my salt dough clay, I only need three ingredients. I just need one quarter cup of water, one quarter cup of salt, and a half a cup of flour. 
That's going to make a nice small batch of clay for me to create my dinosaur bones. If you wanted more clay than that when you would just double the recipe. So instead of having one quarter cup of water and one quarter cup of salt, you would have one half. And instead of just having one half a cup of flour, you would have a full cup. So those are the things you're going to need. And I like to do all my mixing in a cookie tray or a cookie sheet. That way it captures the mess. I've got a nice big bowl and I've already poured into the bowl my quarter cup of water. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and add my quarter cup of salt. So I've got my salt right here, measuring it out, making sure to measure it, that I do it on a flat surface so that I get a pretty accurate measurement. Yep, almost there, there we go. Quarter cup of salt, adding that to my quarter cup of water and anything that stayed behind, I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop it out. That way I have a pretty accurate recipe. And then the next thing I'm going to add is a half a cup of flour, and that's it. I have an extra little dish of water handy. That way, if my clay is a little bit too dry, I can add that in. So now I'm going to add my half a cup of flour, making sure again to do it on a flat surface so I get an accurate measurement. Let's see, shake it. Oh, too much, too much flour. So I'm gonna add a little bit back. Try that again. There we go, that looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and add that to my water and my salt. Once I've got it added, now I'm going to mix it up. When you're mixing it up, you might notice that the salt dough could be a little bit too wet. If it's too wet, that means you need to add a little bit more flour. If it's too dry, then it means it's thirsty and it needs more water. But first, just mix it. Mix it up, get the ingredients really combined, and what you'll notice is this. It's going to look a little bit dry, like mine does. It's not super sticky. You know what? That's a good thing. That's exactly what we want. I'm gonna scrape everything off the sides and get it all mixed up. Awesome, there we go. Now I've got it about as good as I can get it with my little spatula dealio here. So now I'm ready to do some kneading with my hands. So I'm gonna get a little dirty here. It's my favorite part. I'm squishing up and really combining all of the ingredients together by kneading the dough. Kneading, this kind of kneading means that you're squishing it and combining it together. And as you're doing that, if it's a little crumbly or parts fall off, you might just wanna leave that there. Or if it's just a little dry, mine's a little dry, which means to me I might be used too much flour. So I'm gonna add a tiny, tiny bit of water just a little bit, <laughs> that was probably too much. That's okay, because I can always balance it again after I'm done kneading it with some flour. Let me go ahead and mix this up. Once you've got it, it should be nice and smooth. It shouldn't leave your hands as sticky as mine is leaving mine. That's because when I added my water, it was a little too much, but maybe with some kneading, I'll get it to a good consistency. All right, I think it's shaping up pretty good. It's not cracking, it's not crumbly, it's not too sticky on my hands. I'm ready to create my dinosaur bones. Now that we've made our clay and we've got our cardboard ready, let's go ahead and make our dinosaur dig. I also grabbed a couple of extra things, just a paintbrush, and I'm gonna be using the ends of the paintbrush to not only slice the clay, but also make things like the eye. If you don't have a paintbrush, Something like a crayon would be great, or even a pencil would be awesome too. If you have little bitty toys from when you work with something like Play-Doh, those Play-Doh kind of tools would work awesome. So grab what you've got, and if you don't have something like that, like I said, a pencil will be fine, and let's go ahead and talk about working with our clay. Now, if you're working with your clay, as you work with it, if you notice that it starts to be a little bit dry, like this kind of clay, notice that it's cracking quite a bit. That's your clay's way of telling you that it's thirsty. If it needs a little bit more water, go ahead and give some water. Oh, thank you, Miss Stevens. You're so welcome, and then just kind of massage that water into the clay, and what that will do is make the clay nice and soft again. That way when you're creating with it, it won't crack. 
Remember, you can make anything out of clay as long as you know how to make a sphere, which is a ball of clay, a slab, which is a squished piece of clay, and a coil. A coil is a rolled piece of clay. We're going to be using a lot of coils today. Take a look at my finished dinosaur. The whole body is almost completely made out of coils or a rolled piece of clay. So to begin, I'm going to take a piece of clay and I'm going to show you the size. Now you can follow along with me and make a Tyrannosaurus Rex or you can make another kind of dinosaur, maybe one that you're interested in, or you could invent some sort of imaginary creature. Maybe it's a dinosaur, unicorn, magical, I don't know, you're the artist. So if you wanna create something else, go for it. I'm going to begin with the skull of my dinosaur. And to start, I'm beginning with a piece of clay that's about the size of a gumball. Don't eat it, it would be the worst tasting gumball on the planet. I'm gonna take my hands and roll this into a coil. So for a sphere, my hands make a circle, for a coil, my hands go up and down. I'm gonna go up and down with my hands. If that's difficult to do, you can always move, use your cardboard as a mat and roll it up and down your cardboard. Now that I've got a coil, I'm going to bend it so that it makes a letter C. Now I'm going to look at the size. If it's a really tiny coil, maybe I didn't use enough clay to make it in which case I'll just grab some more clay and add to it. If it's really big, then maybe I should subtract or take some clay away. So the whole time that you're creating, you need to be problem solving. They look at your artwork. If you see a problem, think about a solution to solve the problem. Okay, so I think that this size will be pretty good. I want the skull to go right about here because I'm thinking of my composition, where the rest of the pieces will go. And I'm going to bend it a little bit and then smush it into place. When you have a clay that's the right shape that you like, you have to press it gently into the board. Pressing it into the board will get it to stick. Okay, now it looks a little bit like a sideways squished letter C. Let's go ahead and give it its eye sockets. For that, I'm gonna smoosh the clay up a little bit right there. Notice how I just kind of smooshed and smeared the clay up a little bit. I'm using the back of a pencil, a paintbrush, whatever you've got that's flat. And I'm gonna go ahead and squishy, squish, 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 make a little eye socket for my dinosaur. Now we're looking at the profile or the side view of the dinosaur, which is why you only see one eye. I'm gonna go ahead and use something smaller like a paintbrush and maybe give him, oops, give him a little nostril. Okay, okay, looking pretty good. Now I can use tiny little pinching fingers. Oh, right there, I can give him some teeth, but that's pretty tricky to do. So here's another way you could do it. You could make little tiny squished and pointed pieces of clay and add those to the mouth to make your dinosaur teeth. You are the artist, you get to decide. Now I'm gonna go ahead and work on the rest of the body. If you need to hit the pause button so that you can get caught up, do it. If you need to re-watch me work, go ahead and rewind. All right, now let's take a look at the spine. This is what we're working on next. You are like a dinosaur in that you have a skull, you have eye sockets and teeth, you also have a spine. If you take your hand and you run it down your back or mama's back or daddy's back or brother or sister, you'll feel their spine. You'll also feel some little ridges or bumps and that's the vertebrae on their spine. So like you, a dinosaur has a spine with vertebrae. So to create that, I'll use a piece of clay, roll a sphere, make a coil, and if it's too hard to do with your hands, go ahead and do it on your board. Just don't squish it in your board because it'll stick. Let's see, I could make a straight spine, but I'm, I know that the Tyrannosaurus is Rex backs are usually arched or curved, so I kind of curved that line. Notice I didn't make it crazy long because I want to keep it a little bit short because I want to make the rest of the body. But I think, you know what, I'm gonna make it just a little bit longer. The way to stretch out that clay is to just roll it some more. And if you want to connect the two, I like to leave a little space. 
So now that I've got that, I'm gonna squish it flat. Now the vertebrae is made up of shorter coils. I used four. So here's a trick. I want those coils to be about the same size. To get them about the same size, roll a sphere. You guys will be experts at making coils when we're done. Roll a coil. Use preferably a piece of paper or something down on your surface. Do not roll this clay on your table because it might stick. Roll a nice coil that's nice and long. And let's go ahead and cut vertebrae out. Now I was able to make a nice even coil. If you weren't able to do that, maybe yours is smaller, it's fine. Maybe you just need to roll it up and try it again. That's the cool thing about clay is, is that you can always just roll it up and give it another shot. Let's see, I'm gonna use my paintbrush like a little cutting tool. Maybe I want the vertebrae to be about that long. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that one that I like the length of as a little measuring stick for the rest of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slash and slash. Okay, so now I've got five little coils. Try not to let them get stuck together for my vertebrae of the spine. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe stretch it just a little bit because it needs to go all up, over, and down on the spine. Not too long. And you know what? If it is a little too long, it's fine. You could leave it or you could just slice it with your cutting tool. All right, so I'm gonna add these over that spine to create the vertebrae. When I'm finished with that, I can start to think about the arm. Now on this one, I only created one arm because the other one could be on the other side. Or maybe it's a dinosaur bone. They've been underground for hundreds maybe even longer, thousands of years. So there's a good chance that some of the bones are no longer there. So you could always have some bones be missing. Oh, I think that spine looks great. All right, so next up for the arm, I have this coil, but if you don't have a coil, go ahead and roll one. Uh-oh, my clay is starting to crack. I know what to do, no need to panic. Just add a little bit of water, roll it, bend it into a V, or you could make one, two parts. I think that's what I'll do. I'll make the upper part of the arm and the forearm or the one that's in front. So there's the upper arm, squish it in place. And then the forearm, the lower part, it looks a little long. I can just pinch it shorter. Maybe keep a little space between them or you can connect them, it's up to you. And now I'm gonna go ahead and make his claw. And I'm doing it the same way that I did his head. I'm just gonna take a piece of clay and bend it, but you can do it any way you want. All right, squish it in there. Again, if I'm going fast, just give me a pause and I'll slow down for you a bit. There we go, now the ribs. If you take a deep breath in, <gasps> your ribs expand. You probably felt them expand. Your chest probably puffed up because your lungs were filling up with air. Your lungs live inside of your ribs. Guess who else had lungs and ribs for breathing? Dinosaurs! So that's what I'm gonna add next. Notice that they're coils, but they're a little bit curved. So I'm gonna take a piece of clay. Remember I said you're gonna be experts at rolling coils. Make it a little curved and then check the scale. The scale is the size of things. This is way too big. So I'm gonna take my little cutting tool, otherwise known as my paintbrush, like your paintbrush, and I'll just make it a little smaller. Scale is how things are sized in proportion or next to one another. For example, if I made a really big rib, we would say it's out of scale. It doesn't match the rest of the size of the dinosaur parts. So it's important when you're creating to check the scale of things. This rib is the littlest, so I'm gonna do a little bitty rib right there and it's curved. Okay, great. Now let's work on those legs. For my dinosaur legs, he's got legs like us in that we have a thigh and a calf. You could make one like that, or you could do it like how I did my arm here with two pieces. So here's the thigh, 
it's a little longer than the arm, think about where you want the legs to go. You might even want to take your finger and draw it out first and think about where the legs could go. So I rolled one coil. I'm going to roll another one. Uh-oh, a little too long. That's okay. I know what to do. I am a problem solver. Just pinched it. There we go. And maybe now I'll add his feet the same way I did the hand. Now, if you're finished today or when you finish, if you have extra clay, you could always add more bones. You know, I don't like where that is positioned. It doesn't look quite right there. So let's see if I can change my composition, change the placement of things. There we go. Before I squish it in, let me think. I think that looks pretty good. I like that. Okay. Now I could do another leg here. I could do another one there. I think I'll put it here. Notice how I drew it with my finger first to try to get an idea so I could see it in my mind's eye. Did you know that you have a mind's eye? That just means that you're imagining it, thinking about what it could look like. This piece, I just bent it instead of making two pieces and I'll do the foot the same way. Now for the tail. Ooh, you need to think about where could the tail go? I have all of this space right here. Using my finger, I'm gonna draw a couple of places for my tail. It could maybe spin around or swirl, but before I do my tail, I need to add the pelvis. The pelvis right here is also something that you have. So I'm using a ball of clay, squish it into a slab. I'll set it right there at the base of the spine. Okay, now I'm gonna work on my tail. So the tail is a lot like the spine. This is the one thing that a dinosaur has that you don't. At least I don't think you do. You don't have a tail. So that's the one, one of the many differences, but when it comes to dinosaur bones and the bones in your body, that's a pretty big difference. I'm rolling a nice long coil, grab my board, and let me think about where this could go. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and squish it flat. And now I can add my vertebrae the same way that I did on my dinosaur's back. Cats and dogs, those kind of creatures that have tails, you might have very gently touched their tail before and notice that it feels a little bit lumpy and bumpy. That's because it has that vertebrae all throughout. So you could go ahead and create your vertebrae the same way you did getting a good measurement using your first one as your measuring tool. Now, here's an idea. When you finish your dinosaur, let it dry. If it's a beautiful, sunny, warm day, put it outside. If it's not quite so sunny, just leave it inside, maybe in front of a fan, near a vent. Don't put this in the oven to bake because it's got a cardboard stuck to it and we shouldn't put that in the oven. But once it has dried like this one has, what you could do is put this inside of a box, like a sand box, and then you could put some sand or dirt over it, take a paintbrush and go on an actual dig, brushing that dirt out of there, or maybe tell a mom, dad, brother or sister, go on a dinosaur dig with them and have fun with your family. Don't forget when you're all finished with your masterpiece to sign it. If you have any leftover clay, wrap it up in a Ziploc bag or some saran wrap and pop it into the fridge so you can use it later. If you enjoyed making or going on a dinosaur dig, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. Also, tell your friends. We've got all sorts of videos coming almost every day for you to get creative with. Thank you guys. I hope you had so much fun.